Hey guys, Devin from Decon here, and Apple 16-inch MacBook Pro is the perfect example of a company correcting so many wrongs from their past release. The most recent and final iteration of the 15-inch MacBook Pro is very, very divisive. The inclusion of gimmicky touch tech, the unreliable butterfly keyboard, to a key that is much more precise and accurate. In fact, it's four times more stable than that scissor mechanism. The thermal throttling, the lack of port diversity, and the loss of MacBook staples were all talking points, and this was all for the sake of shaving millimeters off the MacBook Pro. This wasn't a professional MacBook, it was a MacBook Pro and MacBook Air clothing, and the performance suffered because of that. And in just under three years, Apple listened to every user and to every reviewer whom complained about their flagship MacBook Pro, and they corrected most of these issues. Now before I talk about what Apple corrected, I want to cover what remains unchanged because there's only a few of them. We still have a lack of port diversity here as we still have the same four USB Type-C ports, all of which are Thunderbolt 3 compliant and they're very, very fast. We still don't have an SD card slot or any legacy ports here, but that can be easily remedied with an adapter. And the web camera remains unchanged, it's still a 720p web camera, and overall it's not the worst web camera you'll see out there, it's not great. I mean, color reproduction is average, and there's still a lot of artifacting going on in the background here. But overall, I think most people are going to be okay with it. Not all things unchanged are bad, however, as the trackpad still remains the same. We still have the same great glass fill, the same great click mechanism with forced touch, and it's easily the largest trackpad on any laptop to date as it's nearly the size of a Nintendo Switch. Okay, let's shift our focus to the important stuff, the stuff Apple has corrected, and the one I'm most excited about is the keyboard. Gone is the butterfly keyboard, and in its stead is Apple's Magic Keyboard. The Magic Keyboard is similar to the butterfly keyboard in that it's overall relatively the same size, and it is backlit, but that is it. The differences begin with the overall layout as we now have an upside down T formation for the arrow keys, rather than them being clustered together. And we also have a physical escape key for the escapists out there. And the biggest difference is key travel itself as it's double the amount, and while it's not as deep as the classic scissor switch found on older MacBook Pros, it's pretty close and it feels really nice. And it's such a significant upgrade over the butterfly keyboard and should improve the end user experience exponentially. And it should also be more reliable as the scissor switch is a tried and true design. The display is a larger 16 inch retina display with a resolution of 3072 by 1920. And it's gorgeous, bright, and highly color accurate. Colors really pop here and contrast is great too, as black levels are excellent. Even with the glossy coating, there's little to no reflections when viewing head-on or off access. And viewing angles are also great, as there's no degradation when viewing off-center. We're getting similar bezels this time around as well, and it's a much welcome addition, as it makes the MacBook look a bit more modern. The speaker system also saw a nice overhaul as well. We have dual upward-firing speakers just beneath these grills here, and we also have dual-firing subwoofers on the bottom of the laptop, which helps provide some nice low end. And this results in astonishing sound. Not only are you getting excellent stereo separation, the highs and mids are easily the best I've heard on any laptop to date. And while I wish that low end had a bit more oomph to it, it's still nice and tight, and it's leagues ahead of any other laptop. This speaker system is very, very nice, and honestly, I wouldn't recommend getting any external speakers because they're that good. The cooling architecture has been completely reworked. We still have the intakes on the side and the exhaust underneath the display, but the vents themselves are much larger, which allow for more air to pass through. And internally, the heat sinks and fans are much larger as well, and all this culminates for much better cooling. And this shows during use as well. Editing is much quieter, more responsive, and overall it was just a better experience. There was some minor throttling during my render test, however it was minimal, and it's a vast improvement over last generation where the MacBook Pro is just throttled to hell. Alright, let's look at our internals real quick. I have the baseline i9 model here, which comes with an i9 9880 chip, which is a 2.3 GHz 8-core processor. And just adjacent to that, we have our dedicated AMD Radeon Pro 5500M graphics card, which comes with 4 GB of DDR6 memory. And just below our CPU, we have 16 GB of RAM, which is soldered onto the motherboard. To the far right of our motherboard, we have our solid-state drive, which is also soldered onto the motherboard. This model came with 1 TB. Alright, let's cover the CPU real quick. We still have the same 9th generation Intel chips that we saw from earlier this year, and both the i7 and i9 models performed extremely well as I experienced zero lag or stuttering while editing in 4K. So I shoot in 4K which means I'm dealing with mainly 4K footage, and this has always been so very taxing on my computer. 
I honestly never have had a very smooth editing experience. Whenever I try to scrub through my previews or I play back my previews, there's always stuttering and lagging going on. Even when I bump down my preview quality to around 1 16th, it's just always kind of a frustrating experience and I just had to put up with it because it's the hardware that I have. With this i9-9880H processor, editing has never been better for me. It was buttery smooth the entire time, even when I kept my preview quality at full 4K resolution. And even better, the MacBook Pro stayed relatively quiet throughout the entire editing process, and only when I began working on graphs did the internal fan kick on and let its presence be known. While the AMD Radeon Pro 5500M graphics card worked great for editing, it actually doesn't work that well for gaming. Even though it's using the latest Navi architecture, it's still not that great. It can handle lower tier games such as Bastion, Transistor, or any Apple Arcade with ease, as they maintain around 60 frames per second. And when I tried to play more intensive AAA-like titles such as Firewatch or Rise of the Tomb Raider, it hovered around 15 to 16 frames per second. And for all you Fortnite players out there, it works flawlessly at 1080p as well as I was able to play two straight matches without any issues. Despite having the largest battery to date, battery life wasn't that great. For general use at maximum or minimum brightness, I got just over five hours of battery life. And when I tried to completely stress out the MacBook Pro while using After Effects at maximum brightness, I was able to get just over three and a half hours. In terms of negatives, I don't really have any, but I am a bit surprised Apple hasn't included Face ID yet, which has been on iOS for another two years now, and it's actually tech that Windows has had for four years now, and I think it's time for it to come to the Mac side of things. While I think that Touch ID has its place, Face ID would just be a much more convenient way of logging into your MacBook, as it would be instantaneous as you open the lid. Apple's new 16-inch MacBook Pro is a return to form for Apple in the professional market. Outside of port diversity and upgradability, it's everything that a professional could ask for. Apple's beautiful craftsmanship, a large, color-accurate professional display, a best-in-class keyboard, trackpad, and speaker system, and internals that will satisfy even the most power-hungry user. The only disappointment is the mediocre battery life, as it's not going to last your entire workday. But that's not really the point of this laptop, is it? This isn't supposed to be an ultrabook that's going to last you all day long. It's a professional workhorse that you take to and from work or while you're traveling, and you don't skip a beat with your professional workload. And it's priced as such as it starts off at $2,400 for the 6-core i7 model and $2,800 for the 8-core i9 model. This isn't a laptop meant for your average consumer. It's a laptop for professionals, and Apple really delivered on this one. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. If you found it useful, send me your likes. If you enjoy my content, send me your subs. I'll see you next time.